we have been doing some trivias for the last few Thursdays and so as we have asked some of the questions we see where there are areas that we need to teach on um, tonight we're going to go ahead and talk about David being anointed king so this is coming from a trivia question that we have asked and where we see where we saw that many did not understand or know the answer to the question then we mark those areas so we can revisit those areas and do teachings Bible studies on those those stories or you know um, those parts of the Bible all right so tonight we're going to go ahead and we're going to start um, teaching on those areas that we need to um, elaborate and so let's go to the book of first Samuel chapter 16 first Samuel chapter 16 and we are looking at David being anointed king first Samuel chapter 16 if you have your Bible go ahead and turn to first Samuel 16 if you don't have a physical Bible or if you don't have two devices then just watch okay if your Bible is on your phone if it's an app that's on your phone then you don't have to turn to, to the Bible if it's on your phone that you're watching us from right now so just continue watching the live but if you have a second device then you can use that to find the Bible scripture or if you have a physical Bible you use that okay so first Samuel chapter 16 and we are looking at David being anointed to be king it's lagging okay if it's on my those of my live if I'm lagging type lagging let me see if it's all of you or if it's just one person I just type I just clicked on it and it wasn't lagging for me is it lagging for you on my live if you're on my live is it lagging for you or is it good I see you saying okay nope nope it's good for me no lag okay um so don't be shy don't be shy praise the Lord log out and log back in if it's lagging for you just log out <coughs> excuse me log out of the live and log back in and then let's see if that will fix it for you don't be shy praise the lord what chapter 16 so the book of first samuel chapter 16 first samuel chapter 16 you remember when well if you were a part of our Bible studies way back when we talked about Samuel you remember Samuel when when the Lord called Samuel and he was a child he was very young mm -hmm. and he heard the, the Lord calling him and he he was staying with the priest Eli and he thought that the priest had called him he thought Eli called him and he went and asked Eli did you call me and Eli said no I did not call you and he did about two times and when Eli realized that the Lord was calling Samuel he told Samuel go back and lie down if you hear the voice again you should answer and says here I am Lord speak Lord for your servant hear it so the Lord was calling Samuel he was a child and from that time when the Lord called him and spoke to him the Lord used him as a prophet so Samuel became a prophet and he he grew up and be, he became a mighty prophet in the land Amen. yes he became a mighty prophet in the land Samuel became a mighty prophet in the land and mm. then when Israel wanted a king 
Samuel anointed Saul to be king right now in the land of Israel Samuel was well known and the leaders and the rulers they knew him and whatever he, he spoke or prophesied would come to pass so Amen. they'll be very afraid to you know cross him or anything you know something like that so whenever Samuel is coming around they would be afraid or you know because Samuel was a mighty prophet God called him since he was a little child and he became a mighty prophet in the land now Saul became king over Israel and Saul after a while he stopped doing what God wanted him to do and God would God would um, anointed him to rule over Israel at one point God rejected him so after Saul stopped doing what God wanted him to do God rejected Saul so the Bible says the Spirit of God was no longer with Saul so now God was choosing a new person to be king mm -hmm. and he wanted David to be the next king mm -hmm. so that's where we're gonna pick it up God had rejected Saul we will go into that some other time in Bible studies about Saul but I just wanted to kind of give you a background before I dive into this tonight so right where we're going right now this is when God had rejected Saul from being king so God did not want him being king no more and so God was not using him no more God had David that he wanted to appoint and anoint as king over Israel so now God called his prophet Samuel mm -hmm. and told good evening and told Samuel to go and anoint David to be the next king mm -hmm. all right so let's go into it now so if you just joined us first Samuel chapter 16 and verse 1 says this and the Lord said unto Samuel because remember I said that God had rejected Saul so Samuel really he really loved Saul but God rejected Saul so Samuel was mourning Samuel was mourning over Saul because now he has become a, like a lost soul so verse 1 says and the Lord said unto Samuel how long will thou mourn for Saul how long are you gonna continue mourning for Saul you see some people refuse to accept God refuse to serve God and we spend a lot of time trying to save them we can't save them Amen. we spend time trying to save people but we can't save nobody Amen. only God can save people so let me say this to you when you preach the gospel to someone when you preach the gospel to someone one time one time is enough for that person to be saved one time Amen. it's enough for a person to be saved or to reject God now we continue preaching the gospel over and over to the same people that's okay but let me say this to you there are many people in the world who need to hear the gospel Amen. and so when we when we keep speaking to the same person over and over and over again there are 10 other people that if we had spoken to those 10 persons one time 
they probably would have accepted Jesus. Amen. So listen. When we preach to people and they don't want to accept God, then what we do is we pray for them. Sure. You pray. Amen. You pray for them and you say, God, save them. Save them. But the word of God, the Bible says, is quick, it's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Amen. The word of God can save anyone who have heard the gospel for the first time. Yes. But we, in our human self, we, in our human state, we, we feel as if we are the one trying to save people. We can't save people. Mm -hmm. So we feel bad and we try to talk to the person over and over and over and over mm -hmm. and over and over and over and over and over and they say no, 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 no. I'm not telling you to give up on them, but what I'm telling you is you pray for them. Remember, you can't save anyone. So if someone keeps rejecting the gospel and reject you, guess what? Pray for them and move to the next person. Mm -hmm. If someone keeps rejecting you and rejecting the gospel, you just pray for them and you move to the next person. Try to win Amen. someone else. Amen. You know, when Jesus was on earth, he sent his disciples out. And he says, go to these different homes and preach the gospel. And if they accept you, then you bless them. If they reject you, you leave and dust your feet off and leave them. Amen. He says, anyone who reject, dust your feet off and leave them and go to the next person. That's what Jesus was telling his disciples. Go and speak and preach to the people. He said he was here on earth in his ministry. He sent his disciples out. He sent them out. He said, go. And anyone accept you, then you go in and you minister with them. But if anyone reject you, he says, dust your feet off and keep on stepping. Keep on moving. Amen. So, what we do, what we do now, we, we, we think that we're the one saving the people. So we try, we try, and we try. Mm -hmm. But listen, when we do that, we, are, we, we, we get trapped we get trapped into operating in the flesh Amen. we get trapped into operating and thinking that we are the ones saving them mm -hmm. all we need to do is to tell them about the Bible and mm -hmm. that's it mm -hmm. we tell them mm -hmm. about the scripture about the Bible and if they don't want to accept the Bible then guys we can't do nothing Amen. So you pray for them and you go to the next person. Pray for them and go for the next person. Yes. But we can't save no one. You know what Abram told the rich man that was in hell? He says, if the people don't want to listen to the word of God, nothing else can save them. Nothing else can help them. Amen. So I've seen some of the comments that you make where you are trying to convert those who are who may be Muslim, those who may be um, atheists, and you're trying and you're trying and you're trying, but it's not for you. It's for God to do. All you got to do is to tell them the word of God. Amen. You tell them, John 3 and verse 16 For God Amen. so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son That whosoever believeth in him should not perish But have everlasting life You tell them about revelation The wicked shall be turned into hell And all the nations that forget God You have to just give them the word of God And give them Romans 10 and verses 9 and 10 That we talk about every night mm -hmm. Right? Amen. Believe on the Lord Jesus that God raised him from the dead Confess with your mouth and you shall be saved you tell them the word of God just like that. And the word of God is powerful enough to save them. And when they feel convicted, then you say, okay, do you want to pray and accept Jesus now? 
and they say yes or no but when we try to find proof to tell them because we want to convert them so we are trying to find proof to tell them it's it's, it's like we do it ourselves we are not saving them we can't save no one we can't save them God's word is what's going to save them when they hear the word of God then when they believe that's faith and faith when they hear it and they believe that's faith and then they confess now with their mouth and ask Jesus to forgive their sins that's how they're saved so welcome from the Philippines Philippines so listen remember guys we can't save anyone it's the word of God who's going to save people so make sure you are telling them about the word of God and not just what you want to say because you can't save them it's God's word it's going to save them Amen. so listen here now Samuel was crying and mourning over Saul and God had already rejected Saul God rejected Saul the king and God left him and Samuel was spending a long time crying and mourning over Saul mm -hmm. and God had already rejected him it's just like like I was saying that we may be spending a lot of time trying to win this person, win this person over, trying to convert this person, trying to convert this person, trying to win this person over, trying to convert this person. And listen, God may have already rejected them because of what they have done, because of what they, their lifestyle, because of blasphemy. We don't know. We don't know. But for whatever reason, they have been. They probably have been rejected. And we are spending a lot of time with that one person and there are many more people who need to hear the gospel so what you do is you pray for them if they don't want to accept Jesus just pray for them and you go to the next person and try to preach the gospel to them but always use the gospel always use the Word of God when you are trying to witness to people only use the Word of God don't try to bring up stuff from you know you, you out of the flesh no because the flesh can't save no one we can't save no one all right so back to Samuel now Samuel was mourning for Saul crying and God came to Samuel and says how long how long are you going to continue mourning for Saul and I have already rejected him that's what it says if you just joined us we are in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 16 and we just read the, a part of verse 1 and we just the Lord will just have us to talk about you know how we witness to people we can save people only God's Word can save them so make sure when you are witnessing when you are spreading the gospel only spread God's Word 1 Samuel 16 and verse 1 and the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? God says, I already rejected him from reigning over Israel. And the Lord says, Fill thine horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. So God is saying, how long are we going to spend mourning over some people who just outright reject God and don't want to accept him? And there are many more people who need to hear the word of God. Verse 2, And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a high for with thee and say I am come to sacrifice to the Lord so let me say this Samuel said to the Lord Lord if I go and anoint someone else as king King Saul will kill me if he hear that I'm anointing someone else to be king 
he will kill me. So the Lord says, this is what you do. You take a sacrifice and you go to offer a sacrifice unto the Lord. See, the Lord gives us wisdom in everything. The Lord was giving Samuel wisdom in what he was doing. Why? Because Samuel says, if I go and anoint someone else to be king while Saul is still king, Saul will kill me. So the Lord says, okay, well, here's what you do. You are going to go and offer a sacrifice to God. But while you go to offer up a sacrifice to God, I want you to anoint this next up and coming king. So, of course, where, Saul, where Samuel was living, and of course, like I said, everyone knew Samuel. So, the moment he goes to this part of town, it's going to look suspicious. Why are you coming here? Why is Samuel here? So it's going to look suspicious, right? And so if he was to go in that town and says, he's anointing someone to be king, of course the word is going to go back to Saul and then Saul will try to kill him. But God gave him wisdom. God says, no, you go and you offer up a sacrifice to me. But in the process of the sacrifice, you anoint David to be king. So God gives us wisdom, guys, in what we're doing. God gives us wisdom. Listen, if you, you, do you notice that God did not say to him? Because sometimes we do stuff and we love to say, Oh, God will protect me. Oh, God will do this. Oh, God will do that. Do you notice that God did not say to him, Okay, I want you to go and anoint the king because I am God and Samuel can't hurt you. I mean, sorry, and King Saul can't hurt you. Do you notice that God did not tell him to forget that? Just go. I will protect you. Go and anoint him as king. God himself gave Samuel wisdom in how to go about the strategy to anoint King David. Some people would have said, Oh, I'm just going to go and anoint him because God is powerful and, and no one can hurt me. If I go and anoint him as king, God is going to protect me and no one can hurt me. God, God himself didn't even do that. But God is powerful enough to do that. He's powerful enough to protect him and to say, go and, and, anoint, and anoint him as king because he can't hurt you. I will protect you. God is more than powerful enough to do that. But God himself did not even tell him to do that. Amen. God wants us to use wisdom in what we do. In everything we do, use wisdom. When Jesus was on earth and he knew that the people wanted to kill him, the Bible says he stayed away from those cities. Yes. Jesus is God. Jesus stayed away from the cities where he saw and he knew people were plotting to kill him. He stayed away when he knew there was a function, there was a wedding, something going on. The Bible says he would go up in secret. He would go and in secret attend. Not go and just present himself and say, okay, I'm here, here, here. Who can touch me? Jesus is God and he used wisdom and he would stay away until it was time for him to go to the cross. Amen. Until it was time for him to go to the cross, that's when the Bible says he turned his eyes to Jerusalem because he knew when once he go there, they were going to capture him to put him to death. But when he knew it was time now for him to really go to the cross, that's when the Bible says he turned his eyes to go there. But all the other times, he would stay away from certain areas where he knew that people were trying to kill him. And he would go to other cities and preach to those who want to hear the word of God. Amen. He would stay away, go to other cities and preach and win souls. And this, the areas where they're trying to kill him, he stay away from there. So listen, 
people doing all these different things and oh i'm not afraid of covid oh i'm gonna do this oh i'm not wearing no mask oh i'm, do I'm mm -hmm. this oh i'm this i'm doing mm -hmm. that and they want to do everything and say oh because god will protect me god wants us to use wisdom amen god wants us to use wisdom amen if there's a pandemic protect yourself amen protect yourself listen I don't know why the Lord has me going this way tonight because I wanted mm -hmm. to talk about King David. But let me just continue. Amen. If there's, a, if there's danger, you know, there's danger, you stay away from the danger. Don't just go to the danger and say, oh, God will protect me. If there's danger, stay away from the danger. Amen. God, you know, God protect us, you know, when things are plotting against us and we don't even know. When we don't know and stuff are plotting against us and enemies are plotting against us. God protects us. But if you know enemies are plotting against you and they're trying to hurt you, why would you try to run in their presence? Why would you try to go mm. to them? Amen. Why would you try to go into the danger? Stay away from the danger. Don't say I'm going because God will protect me. No. Stay away from danger. God gave Samuel wisdom to protect him from King Saul. Amen. God gave him wisdom in what to do. So he can be protected from the king. Because Samuel says, God, if I go and anoint another king, this king Saul will try to kill me. So God says, okay, here's what you do. You take a heifer to do a sacrifice and you say, I'm here to offer sacrifice to the Lord. Let me read it because the Lord says. And Samuel says in verse 2. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with thee and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. Amen. I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. Mm -hmm. The Lord gave him a strategy. The Lord gave him wisdom so mm -hmm. he can be protected from King Saul. And so in verse 3, it says, And call, now you hear what the Lord says now. When he go to offer the sacrifice, he says now, Call Jesse to the sacrifice. So the Lord says, don't just go and do a sacrifice. But when you go for the sacrifice, call Jesse to come to the sacrifice. He says in verse 3, And call Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show thee what thou shalt do. And thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. Amen. It's a strategy. It's a strategy. The Lord says, you are going to anoint. What was the purpose of for him going there? The Lord says, Samuel, I want you to stop mourning over Saul. Who is Jesse? David's father. David's father so David was the next person to be king and God was about to anoint David to be king David was the son of Jesse so you hear what God says God says I want you to go and anoint someone for, for us as, as king Samuel was afraid because if he was to go and anoint then he knew some Saul will try to kill him. So the Lord says, well, go and do a sacrifice. And when you go and do the sacrifice, invite Jesse to come 
to the sacrifice with his sons. Mm -hmm. Jesse to come with his sons to the sacrifice. And then verse 4 now says, And Samuel did that which the Lord spake, and came to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming, and said, Come thou peaceably. See, they knew about Samuel, and they were afraid. When they heard Samuel was in town, the elders and the rulers were afraid. They were like, Do you come in peace? Are you coming in peace? The Bible says they trembled. They trembled at his coming. Can you imagine? The rulers and the elders, when they heard that Samuel was coming to town, they were afraid. They trembled. Man of God was showing up. Man of God was showing up. And the Bible says they trembled at his coming. And they asked, Are you coming peaceably? Are you coming in peace? And he said, peaceably, I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. Sanctified me to set aside, set yourself aside, mm -hmm. set apart, Amen. set apart for the sacrifice. Amen. So he says to Jesse, he set them apart for the sacrifice you understand because God gave him what wisdom to carry out this strategy to get David anointed to be king mm. so the Lord so he went and he, he set he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice and it came to pass in verse 6 when they were come so when Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice that he looked on Eliab now this is one of Jesse's son and he said surely the Lord's anointed is before him so Jesse I mean sorry so Samuel as soon as he saw this son he said he, th he thought to himself this gotta be the one this gotta be the one who the Lord wants to be king I guess he probably looked big and mm -hmm. strong and mm -hmm. tall and all yes. of that stuff so he was ready to anoint him as king but in verse 7 he says but the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance. Don't look at his outward appearance. Mm -hmm. Don't look at the way he looked big and tall and strong and whatever and macho. Mm -hmm. Because that's what Samuel was seeing. So Samuel was ready to anoint him to be the king. And the Lord says, Nope. He says, And hear the Lord telling us, Look not on his countenance or on, his, or on the height of his stature. So don't look at his height because I guess he was tall and he was probably looking stout and big because I have refused him. So the Lord says, <laughs> I have refused him. He's not the one. And then the Lord gave him this now, this nugget. For the Lord see it not as man see it. For man looketh on the outward appearance, Amen. but the Lord looketh on the heart. Amen. The Lord is looking on our hearts, guys. Amen. So when we think we can fool people, <laughs> when we think My we God. can act as if we are Christians and we are, we are fooling people, mm -hmm. the Lord is not looking at our outward appearance and how we act and how we behave. The Lord is looking straight at our heart. Mm -hmm. The Lord is looking at your heart to see if you love your brother or your sister. The Lord is looking at your heart to see if you forgave this person. The Lord looks at our heart, not our outward appearance. Mm -hmm. So let us always remember that, that God looks at our heart. So whatever you saying about your brother and your sister in your heart, that's what God is looking at. <laughs> that's what he knows and sees. He knows mm -hmm. exactly how we feel about each other. Mm -hmm. He knows how we really think, mm -hmm. how you really feel about this person. Yes. Even though you may laugh and talk and be friendly with them, how do you really feel about them in your heart? Because that's where God is looking, in your heart. Mm -hmm. So God looks at the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab, another son, and made him pass before Samuel, and he said, 
neither of the Lord chosen this. So Samuel says, nope, he's not the one. one. Then Jesse made Shama to pass by. And he said, no, neither of the Lord chosen this. Again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, the Lord hath not chosen these. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? Because now <laughs> Jesse knows that, I mean, Samuel knew the Lord sent him here. So, mm -hmm. gotta be one more person, or gotta be more children, because the Lord sent him directly to Jesse. So Samuel says, Are these all your children? Right? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest. So Jesse says, The youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. So Jesse says, No, I have one more. Mm -hmm. He's the youngest and he's watching the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him. Send and get him. For we will not sit down till he come either. And he sent and brought him in. Now hear how the Lord describes David. Now he was ruddy. And with all of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. That means David was a good looking boy. Mm -hmm. handsome. David was a handsome looking boy. He was the youngest and he was watching the sheep. Alright? And the Lord says, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Mm -hmm. The Lord says to Samuel, Arise and anoint him. This is he. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came up upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. So the Bible says that when David came in, immediately the Lord told Samuel to get up and to anoint David. Because he was going to be the next king. Mm. And then look what the Bible says. When he anointed David, the Bible says, The Spirit of the Lord came up on David from that day forward. That means the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord came up on him. And that's how David was blessed in everything that he did. He was anointed to be king, but not just that. He was rich, he was a man of war, he was powerful, all of that. Why? Because the Spirit of the Lord came up on him, the Bible says, from that day forward. Amen. From that day forward, the Spirit of God was up on David. Now let me say this. I'm not going to read the rest of it. The rest of it talk about um, David. It's, I may go back to the rest of it tomorrow night because it's very interesting. Verse 14 we'll read that tomorrow night to verse um, 23 it's very interesting because what happened is God did not just only anoint David to be king but God set him up to start working directly with the king here is God using David who was now ready to be the next king he was not going to be the king right there and then but God anointed him to be king. But then God took him and had him to work directly right under the king, King Saul. Amen. So then guess what? He was learning the ropes. He was learning. This was a young, young lad. David was very young. And he was now going to be working right directly with King Saul. Learning the ropes <laughs> because he was going to take over from King Saul. And King Saul didn't even know it. King Saul did not even know that God anointed David to be his replacement. God had rejected Saul and brought in his replacement right under him to work right beside him to replace him. And Saul did not know it. And see, when the enemy plans evil for us, God will set, up, set, set stuff up for us. Mm -hmm. He will use the same enemy to make way for us. Mm -hmm. When your enemy is plotting against you, God will use the same enemy to make way for you to mm -hmm. prosper. Mm -hmm. 
because Saul became David's enemy. After this, Saul became David's enemy and wanted to kill him later on, not right away. But after he saw how the Lord was blessing David, he hated David and wanted to kill David. But David was already anointed to be the next king. So he couldn't have killed him. He couldn't have killed David. He was supposed to be the next king. And so David went through a lot. Because David was anointed to be king when he was a young lad. And it was years after before he actually became the king. So I know God has anointed many of us for our work. And it's still years past and we still haven't been doing that work yet. Mm, my God. It's still years past and you still haven't seen yourself my in God. that work yet. But God already anointed you to do the work. Yes. God already anointed you for the work. And even though time has passed and it seems as if you are not doing the work, you were already anointed for the work. Amen. And God is now set, setting you up to step into your work mm -hmm. and step into your calling. Mm -hmm. He has now set you up and he's training you to step into your calling. God anointed David when he was young and he put him right under the king to train to be the next king. Mm -hmm. And he didn't, he didn't become the king right away. It was years after that he took over and became king. So whatever God has anointed you for, it's coming. Amen. You may not be doing it right now, but it's coming. Amen. Amen. We will continue that tomorrow night. We will talk about how David went and started his training on the job, right? On the job training. As soon as he was anointed to be king, shift. There was a shift. Amen.